There is a discussion among the Mepharshim on what was the status of the Avos, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, Koda, Mat, and Torah, before the Torah was given. As we all know, the Torah was given Har Sinai, a Mount Sinai, and that's why we're obligated in commandments. Even though Avram, let's say, did the mitzvah of Mila, and the Avos did other mitzvahs, the reason why I'm obligated to do Mila has nothing to do with Avraham. The reason why it's binding was once it has nothing to do with Avram, historically speaking, and we learn out different qualities of Avram in terms of how we perform the mitzvahs, but the Rambam writes in Perish HaMishnayis, in Chul and in other places, the reason why it's binding on me, perhaps I could volunteer, maybe not, because then I get into a problem of injuring my body if there's no commandment. But the reason why I'm obligated to do Mila is because it was given to Moshe Rabbeinu at Har Sinai. And that's when we received a full Kedusha Yisrael. We make the bracha, Asher Kedusha at Sivanu, because of the, we didn't get all the mitzvahs until Har Sinai, and that's where we have a full-fledged Kedusha sanctity of the Jewish people. There's a discussion, the Mishnah Lamela, one of the commentaries on the Rambam, is one of the first to discuss, it's a discussion in the Rishonim as well, what was the status of the Avos before, that they had the status of, of, of of Ben Noach, that was the status of everyone. We know there are seven universal laws. And these are the big three, the three things you have to give up your life for, not commit adultery, idol worship, or murder. And then Aleph is Aver Menachai, you can't eat a limb from a live animal. Bez is a euphemism, Birkas Hashem, you know, you can't curse God. Gimel is Gezel stealing, and Dalit is Dinim, setting up a court system. So. We know there were seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach, so the, the question, what, the Avos had a status of B'nai Noach, or they have a status of, of, um, of a Yisrael? So that's a discussion, and, you know, and, and perhaps there was somewhere in between, as Rav Salvechik points out, that the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach were given to the whole world, and in fact there are even some, the, there are some books put out, there are some people today who claim to keep the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noah. So, I mean, a lot of Jews who claim to keep that, but I mean, a lot of non-Jews who keep, keep the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noah. And different people wrote different books on it, etc. But Rav Salavashi explained, since the Kedusha Shisrael, the sanctity of the Jewish people, Jewish people was based on the mitzvahs, so he claims like they had a quasi-status, like it was in between a full Kedusha Shisrael and seven mitzvahs, because as the Rambam writes, that each of the others kept on adding more mitzvahs. That's why Avram Avinu, in addition to the seven mitzvahs B'nai Noach, he, he instituted the mitzvah of Mila. And in fact, that's why it says in Tehillim, when I say Achal Hashminis, it's referring to Bris Mila, which is the eighth, besides Bris Mila being done on the eighth day, but Bris Mila was the eighth mitzvah given to um, after the first seven mitzvahs. So, so they were probably a somewhere in between status. And in fact, we see, we find in Chazal, they even have this concept of the others keeping the Torah before it was given. We find that in many different um, sayings in Chazal. In fact, they ask questions, how could it be done? This is against the Torah, even though the Torah in theory wasn't given until Harsina. Of course, we all know the Chazal tells us the Torah was given even before the world was created. It was given, God looked at the Torah and created the world. And that's why, that's the famous Vilna Gon, Vilna, Vilna Gon points out, we know the last eight, the last eight psukim in the Torah is a discussion who wrote them. Was it, was it Moshe or was it Yehoshua? Why would we have a discussion on the last eight psukim? Why not the first eight psukim? Isn't that heresy? Even entertaining a discussion that perhaps Moses did not write the whole Torah. So the last day Pesukim is talking about the obituary of Moshe Rabbeinu. So how does it look? By Yom HaShem Moshe, so it's a discussion whether he wrote the last day Pesukim. Well, now we gave a whole share on it, but two opinions, whether Yoshua wrote it or Moshe wrote it. Even if Moshe wrote it, Moshe Kosei Bedema, Moshe wrote it differently than the rest of the Torah. So the, so, so the question, the one of the Rabbi Yehuda asked Rav Shimon, how could you say Moshe wrote it, Mikzei Keshikra? It looks like a falsehood. It looks like a lie. How could 
how could Moshe be talking about his death while he's still alive? So the Vilna Gon says, like, what do you mean? You could ask that question on the whole Torah. Elech lecha, Hashem the Torah was written well before the world was created. So what do you mean, Mechzei Keshikra? So the Vilna Gon has a whole explanation about, based on the Ramban, Nechmanides, in the beginning of Bereshis, that there, there's the pristine Torah into the original form and the one that God gave to Moses at Har Sinai. In other words, the, the original Torah was Shmosa of Shoah Kaddish Baruch It was all names of HaKadosh Baruch if you could decipher the code, you'd be able to figure out what it's saying. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to read anything. And then at Har Sinai, God deciphered the code to Moses. Okay, these, this is how you put the letters together. It's Barashi, it's Bar Kim, and it's a Torah that we could give. So that's what the villain is going to explain. Moses wrote the last day Psukim in the pristine state. So he wasn't writing Mayama Shah Moshe. He didn't write about his own death because that's not what it he didn't understand that it was in the pristine and later on Yoshua came along you know and finished it so Elo Elo Divro Kim Chayim but either way there's a discussion about um, the Avos keeping the whole Torah in fact as we go through all the Parshas how did Yaakov have two, two wives how could he marry two sisters we find questions in the Mepharshim in implying that they understood that the Avos kept the Torah in fact it's not even implied the Gemara in Yuma and Chavches says it explicitly, and many other Gemaras. The Gemara says, Avram Avinu fulfilled the whole Torah even before it was given. And the Gemara even says, Afigu Erev Tavshilin. Even the mitzvah of Erev, which we're all familiar with since this year, we had a lot of Thursday, Friday Yom Tovim. This year we're going to have them next year also. Erev Tavshilin is the mitzvah you prepare on Yom Tov, so you have you'll have enough food for Shabbos. So why is Erev Tafshuan an example of Avram? So simple pshat is that he even kept the rabbinic laws. That's how meticulous Abraham was. He was able to intuit even not only the biblical laws, but the rabbinic laws. But others point out, no, Erev Tafshuan has to do with feeding guests. What was the essence of Avram Avinu? The Midas HaChesed, that his, his life was HaKnas Tzarech, and that's why the Gemara gives that example. Whatever the example is, Avram, the assumption is Avram kept Kohatar Akulo even before it was given. And in fact, that's why it's the famous question is, why did, when it came to the mitzvah of bris meal of circumcision, why did Avram wait? By all other commandments, we say Avram volunteered it. So how come when it comes to the mitzvah of bris meal, Avram waited for a tzivah, a commandment? So, so on that, there are a couple of answers. One is, um, some explain, because by definition, what's a bris, a covenant? What's a peace treaty? We all know you, it has to involve two people, two sides, to make it meaningful. So what was Avram going to make a bris with himself? Obviously, there was no one else there yet, so he had to wait until he was commanded, commanded in the midst of bris in order to have one. A bris involves two parties. There's a famous answer of the Vilna Gon and Rav, the Marami Diskin who points out that based on the Gemara in Kedushin, that we have a principle of Gado HaMetsuva Viyosa Misha'ino Metsuva Viyosa. Greater is the one who does a mitzvah who's commanded than one who volunteers. And of course, even though on a certain level, volunteering is a higher level, we prefer the kids to take out our garbage before we tell them to take it out. But the testosis points out in Kedushin, that's not the, what the Gemara is focusing on. It's much harder to do something when you have to do it. When someone's all over you, commanding you to do something, the Yetzirah, it's much more difficult to do it. And it's, it's human nature not to be like to tell what to do. As we all know, as when you have kids, as in something called reverse psychology, you tell them the opposite of what you want because you want them to listen. Of course, the question is, is the mitzvah of chinach, of teaching your kids to so listen to your parents, that what age you stop doing your very psychology, I'll leave that to you. But the, but the, the, but the human nature is that you have to, um, you, you don't like being told what to do. So therefore... I think about 30. Mm -hmm. You oh, must instruct them not to listen to oh, you. That, oh, that young at 30? So, well, I'm um, just hoping. Hmm. <laughs> listen, until the kid don't listen to me now. Yeah. So, so they okay. point okay. out that God do ha metzuvah so therefore, Avram waited to be commanded because he wanted to get the greater schar 
of God of Hamatsuva. So the question is, so what are so what about all the other ones? All the other mitzvahs he volunteered on his own without a commandment. So why is Migla different? That's what the villain is going to explain to you because by putting on tefillin today, it doesn't stop me from putting it on tomorrow, the next day. Keeping Shabbos this week doesn't stop me from keeping it next week. You could do it as many times as you want. Migla is a one-time shot. So you want to do it, make sure you do it right. So therefore, he wanted to do Migla, what receive and that's how some explain it's a very strange Rashi in this week's parsha. The Torah says, Be'elone Mamre. The God appeared to himself in the fields of Mamre. So Rashi writes, what's Mamre got to do with anything? He gave an Eitza al He gave, an, he gave him advice on doing the Mila. You know, 20 different answers to that question, but the one we want right now is, what do you mean Eitza? Avram needed, God told you to do something, you can ask Mamre. So, so some explain that because as the Gemara also tells us in Yavamas, that the mitzvah of Mila of Avram was different than our mitzvah. That's the biggest proof that we don't do the mitzvah because of Avram. Avram only was commanded in Mila. We have three parts. We have Mila, that, that's cutting off the foreskin, pre re- revealing the membrane, and then we have Mitzitzah, <coughs> sucking out the blood, Yitufei Damo. So Avram Avinu was only commanded in Mila, not Priya. And that's what he was discussing with Mamre, and it says Abram himself did the Priya. So he was discussing with Mamre, like God only commanded me in Mila, but I want to keep all the Torahs. That was, he was wrestling with that issue, whether he should do um, a Mila or Priya. But either way, that's why, um, but even though Abram usually volunteered, but that was the other myth. His Mila was a one-time shot, and therefore um, he had to wait to be commanded. And others point out this pragmatically because we know there's a biblical prohibition of causing damage, causing harm to oneself. In fact, by one of the biggest mitzvahs the Jews have gone, have been accused of being barbaric and taking abuse in history has been the mitzvah of Mila. How could you do it to an eight-year-old baby? You're so barbaric, you're causing him a wound. And throughout Jewish history, it's always been a sore point in terms of whether, you know, people go back and forth, whether it's healthy, not healthy, but um, you, you always, you, you always have that. So really, so before the mitzvah of Mila, it'd be prohibited to do a Mila, because you're, you're not going to cause a wound to yourself. It's only once you have the mitzvah of Mila, then you have a command. So Abram, it's not something you could volunteer. Even a Ben Noach is prohibited of, of, of being chovel, of damaging himself. And therefore, that's why Abram couldn't volunteer it. By other mitzvahs, so there's no harm. But here, he's violating a biblical prohibition of causing harm to oneself. It's only because of the mitzvah of Mila that he was able um, that he was able to do it, and then there's um, then there's the famous um, answer of the briskarav that he points out that it was only in, in other words what came first the chicken or the egg what came first the mitzvah of mila or the there's something called an aro that used to be the big um, curse word during those days you were called uncircumcised. So there's someone physically uncircumcised, but the briskara points out that the status of Aro did not exist until the mitzvah of Mila existed. Though he was the mitzvah of Mila that created the status of an Aro. So before, even though he was physically uncircumcised, there's nothing wrong with that. It's only, it, it, it only became a problem. That's why the Mesha Chachma points out it fits in very well to the Psukim. It says right after God appeared to Avram, he told him about the mitzvah of Mila. So the next Pasuk is, he, Avram went down on the ground and Raji writes because he felt incomplete. He didn't do the mitzvah of Mila. But the obvious question is Avram spoke to God many times before that. He didn't feel incomplete before then. Why didn't he go on? The answer was he was never commanded a Mila before so therefore it wasn't an issue. It was only the mitzvah of Mila that created the status of Mila. And in fact that's the Rabbeinu Tam in the Gemara in Yavamas that we all know there's a case that uh, we have a mitzvah of doing mila. However, meisu ach of machmas mila. Let's say you had you had two you had uh, you had two sons and you did a mila and they died. They hemophilia because they couldn't stop the bleeding. There's a lachis on the third one. You don't do a mila unless maybe later on if he gets healthy. But you don't do a mila because meisu ach of machmas mila. You're not allowed to do it. It's, it's a danger. So you don't. So the Gemara talks about let's say a kohen, a kohen who is an aro can't eat truma. You have to be, so the question is, what about this child? Is he, is he able to eat truma? Well, why not? Oh, well, he's an Aro. Well, 
That's a most assume he can't. But Rabbein on Tom has a Kiddush, he says he's allowed to eat the Chuma. Why? Because he has no mitzvah of Mila. It's the mitzvah of Mila that creates the status of an Aro, and therefore he, since he's, the others, others don't disagree. They just claim, no, this person is Chayev of Mila. He says he can't do it. That you're Chayev, but you're an honest. That's different. And that's the way they assume. But Rabbein Otam has a Kiddush that it's the mitzvah of Mila, and he does, he's not obligated. And in fact, it really comes from the Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi talks about, could you a child shemen shel truma that in, a child could do oil shel truma to the Rishon writes the first seven days you can day eight you can't because why? because day eight now he became chayev emila so therefore he has the status of an aro and therefore you can't use shemen shel truma the Rishon's issue is what about the night leil shemini could you stock shemen shel truma what's the issue of the eighth night because you know the mitzvah begins on day eight, but the day begins at night, but you can't do a meal at night. So that's the mitzvah of the Yushami. When does the mitzvah of meal begin? Does the chiyav begin at night, except I can't do it till the next morning? Or no, the chiyav doesn't begin. That's the issue. So just to summarize, we're discussing um, the status of the Abbas Kodamat and Torah. And they have it's a major discussion that they have the status of B'nai Noach or Yisrael. And out from probably somewhere in between, the Abbas instituted new mitzvahs. And we do all the mitzvahs because Moshe Rabbeinu, not because of the Abbas. And that's why even the mitzvah meal was different. It only had Mila, not Priya. And we asked, how could Avraham Avinu, why did he wait for Mila to be commanded? He volunteered all the mitzvahs, either because a bris only makes sense with two people. It was us of him to do it because you can't, da- you can't dam- put damage your body. Whether like the gra, Mila is a one-time shot, so you have to wait and do it right. Or like the briska rub rights, because he didn't have the status of an oro until the midst of Mila.